Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet a painter in town here in Madison. But uh, the funny thing is, is it's someone that I've been meaning to talk to for a long time. And I follow a lot of people on Instagram. And a lot of the time, I'm like, oh, I got to remember to contact that person, see if they want to be on the podcast. And then I interview people and I forget all the people that I wanted to talk to. And sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. This person... I remembered because they were advertising their gallery online and it showed up on my site when I was checking it one time. And I was like, oh, that's that person. So we talk about how they've been marketing themselves and uh, promotion and painting and p doing their own gallery show, presenting, being in a museum, a museum show coming up. This is a, a great conversation with someone here in Madison. Uh, we talk about how they started painting, the type of style that they have, how that came about and connecting a Facebook store to their gallery site and their store that they have online. So here's my interview starting right now. My name is Shijo and I am an artist here in Madison, Wisconsin. I think that's why you're interviewing me. <laughs> My real job. <laughs> Actually, there's a really funny thing that I want to ask you about. Uh, that's why I'm also interviewing you. So I've been following you a while and I've been, it, I have a, I have a, I follow a lot of people and I go, Oh, I can, I should, I'm going to follow that person one because I'm interested in them. And two, because I'd love to talk with them and have them on the show. And you're one yeah. of those people. And I've been following you a while and sometimes I'll do the interviews and then I'll forget about people or, you know, the list gets really big and it's like, I got to go through that list. Well, I've also just recently gotten back into uh, advertising. Over the pandemic, I was like, I can't be spending money on advertising. Now I'm getting back into it. I'm actually a big self-promoter in, in using marketing and advertising. And mm -hmm. I have ad revenue on my site. And one day I was checking something on my site and one of your ads showed up on my site. And I was like, that's that person that I've been meaning to. <laughs> huh. So you've been advertising. And uh, that's another thing yeah. I wanted to talk to you about because uh, a lot of people I talk to don't advertise or don't know how and mm -hmm. um and or want to and just it's it don't know where to start and you've been doing it and you clearly showed up on my site and i want to say that was good marketing so uh okay. and also i know today another technical thing you uh just announced that you finally got your store connected to instagram which is also <laughs> a very difficult thing i've had to figure that out and yeah we can talk so let's talk about both those things first of all how how and when have you started uh promoting yourself online well i mean the promoting they're many ways right I, I post a photo on facebook instagram that's promoting and or you know you can purchase ads so but i started with social media i think 2018 okay. uh, posting my paintings online and i think that is a huge part of you know being an artist because you know you can paint and paint and have tons of work in your studio and enjoy them and do what you love but to me i think the connection with people starts with take you know getting yourself out there and posting your work, which can be very scary, mm -hmm. I think. And um, and I know there are always negative naysayers out there. So, but uh, back to your question, started posting in 2018. And that's when I started kind of selling my work. Advertising, I think, is a beast in itself. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so much science behind it that I don't understand. So, you know, I don't know if my ads are going to the right people if they are right um you know money well spent it's a lot of money i mean uh, advertising on facebook is obviously cheaper than yeah. any other sort of um media but still it's money out of my pocket that i don't directly know if that's gonna bring me revenue back so it's tricky but i'm glad that they found you and reminded you of me so yeah hey, at, at, at least it's one person <laughs> And that but, was the beauty um, of it too, is like seeing the work on there. I recognize the work. You had a picture of one of your paintings on there and that's, then I read the name and I was like, oh yeah, because I saw the art first and I'm like, why do I recognize that? So that was, yeah. that was helpful too. <laughs> that's good. That means that I'm doing something right with the branding or, you know, my niche, my signature yeah. uh, when it comes to artwork. So that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. What, what kind of things are you, um, uh, I mean, targeting for, for uh, putting it out there? Like what sort of strategies are you using to get your stuff in front of people as far as advertising and on social media? Because yeah. you don't just start out with followers, you know? No, no. Yeah, so I, you know, the targeting, you have to know 
who your art uh, the audience is. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think I'm fortunate to know pretty well, like demographic wise, who my audience is because of I, I do a lot of shows every year. I do one um, starting in April each year, almost every single weekend. So I know mm -hmm. who my target audience is because of all the people who stop by my booth and who chat with me or who make a purchase. So, you know. And that's know, what marketing is. I mean, they say to, right. they say to mm -hmm. uh, picture the one person you would think is your ultimate, right. they call it an mm -hmm. avatar, which I hate that because it makes it sound like you're playing a game with people, but it's, I mean, right. there's no and other better way to put it, but, but that's the thing is you picture it as one per, one or two people that you would talk to mm -hmm. individually. Otherwise, you, right. you know, it's just like, I think these are who I want mm -hmm. to follow. So that's, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, and specifically if they have daughters, that's usually oh. uh, a better because I think they just spend potentially more time when it comes to art, colors. That's what I use to target my audience when it comes to you know Facebook ads. Yeah, uh, the age, gender. You can select family, you know whether they have not daughter versus son. They don't do that, but you know mm -hmm. if they have like preteen or um, stuff like that. So, and I. I think you can pick interest. I haven't that, gone that far, but you right. know, yeah, it, it's such a complicated um, subject. And yeah. um, no, very uh, much. Yeah. And, and I think that's the the thing is. Um, it can be something, it is complicated. And with what you're doing, you're like, and I haven't got into interest yet. And it's like, yeah, and you don't need to, you can try out this and go, did that work? And then no, and then move on to, okay, now I'm going to try interest. It's, it's not a one and done sort of thing. It's, it's an evolving over time and learning from it. You'll, you'll never know what's, what's exactly the thing you should do or else everybody would be perfect right. at it. You know, mm -hmm. there's actually an interesting thing that you brought up uh, or that you mentioned, you were like, or if they have younger daughters or children, mm -hmm. um, that's a good point. The, the, I feel like, and I, I mean this because you said it and it's like that it opened up a thought in me is your stuff is very much like uh, in high school when people start maturing and getting into art and their interests start becoming more uh, mature or adult or getting in or discovering fine art, you know, like moving mm -hmm. away from the, the lack of example that I have is like SpongeBob SquarePants. I'm, I don't even know if the kids are watching that anymore. <laughs> I know the adults still are, but anyway, but you know, moving on from like the kid cartoons to discovering real artists or more mature mm -hmm. art subjects or things like that. And I feel like yours would appeal to that. And it's actually true. Instead of going I know these people who are eventually going to get older and that's my market. It's like, no, there's also a new market that I think your work would appeal to with the colors, with the style that you have. And uh, the, it's, it's interesting to think that way. Like what about, I, I could totally see people in high school getting into art or who are first discovering it, really loving your work. Uh, and have you ever done any stuff with schools or teaching? Um, it's funny that you say that. No, not yet. Really? I have not done any uh, teaching, but I am planning to start uh, workshops this year. That was one of my big goals. Oh, because you know, I've so far been mainly my income stream as an artist is just selling my work. Mm -hmm. And that is really hard, you know, as an artist. Yes. Um, I think you need multiple income streams. And lots of people do YouTube, you know, the ads, um, they teach courses, they, um, you know, they have like connections with like marketing agencies to get their stuff in prints and all of that. So, and selling the original artwork or, or prints is usually a small percentage of what um, at least professional artists do uh, to earn a living. So <laughs> in 2022, that's my, my big kind of commitment. I have never taught anything at all. And <laughs> I don't think I'm natural in that, but you know, it's just something that I think I want to do and <laughs> yeah. uh, hopefully I have fun doing it. Cause you know, at the end of the day, if I don't have fun, others aren't gonna, not going to have fun. And right. It's just not working. But um, yeah, hopefully I'll get some inspirations uh, and people will see you. There's no, not going to be an age um, restriction. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look into that, but uh, young people are most likely welcome. <laughs> yeah. And, and you did, you mentioned YouTube and you actually had started a YouTube channel not too long ago, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because, you know, I was trying to just think of the different income streams that artists can make. And YouTube is, there's so much, I mean, you do podcasts, so, you know, there's so much time that you have to devote into it. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, 
I just cannot carve out more time right. <laughs> to, to, yeah. So there's like four videos up there. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You just started. Like, you know, I don't expect you to have like 85 videos after the past couple well, of months. Some you know? people, they do like one a day. Or that's not, true. One you know, that's. But, that, um, but that's if yeah. like, that's what they do. Or if they do have that backing that you just spoke about, you know. But, but yeah. the other thing I was thinking was, uh, it might be an interesting way to test that. You said you don't know if you'd be good at teaching or, or comfortable mm-hmm. doing it. I mean, have you ever thought about like doing a walkthrough, like on one of your paintings just, or yeah. thinking of it like a so, class? Yeah. You know, for me, because I don't do a full time, right. So it's right. something that I do have to work or on the weekends. I just want to go into my studio and paint. I don't want to have to like set up the camera 20 minutes later and, you know, <laughs> Um, have to worry about is my big head in the in camera? Can people even see me? Do, do <laughs> you know, I just wanted to paint, and that's why I started this whole thing. And um, that's why the YouTube video, uh, YouTube channel is not growing because I'm too lazy and I can't be bothered. But you know, it's definitely, yeah, I don't know um, if I'd call I'm it being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're not, you're definitely not lazy. I've, I've seen a lot of the things you do and you, you keep pretty busy. Um, so <laughs> how did you get started? How did you start, uh, painting? And actually I'm going to go back further. What was the first thing that got you into creating art in general? Like what was the thing that in where you were like, I'm going to continue to do this. Like, what did you start out drawing or painting? Well, I'm not going to go back to like times that don't, I don't think matter, but I did go to art school. Uh, so I did go to elementary school. It was an art school. So oh. um, my major was, so we all had a major. <laughs> in, in elementary school? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. My major was piano. And so um, that's, you know, the, the subject that I spent a lot of time on and I was classically trained. But art, like painting, drawing, you know, um that's always part of the curriculum, even though I wasn't uh, a drawing or painting major, because there were other people who were, mm-hmm. and that was their, you know, so like each end of each semester, I would, you know, my exam would be like my, I would be piano, right? But other people, they would have drawing, you know, that sort of exams. So that's like early on. <laughs> okay. How I started, you know, I always painted with you know pastels and oil pastels and stuff like that watercolor too but um i started painting like acrylic you know after um i think it was 2016 17 i had a job i started a job. i graduated college had, had a job and i was just bored on the weekends no homework what's what is this, this brand new world and <laughs> not, nothing going on on the weekends and that's that's what i started doing just painting and um, I was doing, I think, still life, you know, a painted okay. an apple or a landscape, that sort of thing with acrylic, but that got boring really quickly. And <laughs> I think I needed something just more interesting than an apple <laughs> or a watermelon. Yeah. So, um, and acrylic porn is what I started doing, and I still do that a lot. Um, yeah, and how did you find out about acrylic pouring? Like that's something I, I, think, I, I think I was searching acrylic painting uh-huh. on YouTube, and I wanted tutorials of how to paint with acrylic because that's what I did. I didn't want to deal with oil because it's messy. Watercolor seems, I don't know, it's not like saturated enough. You know, the colors of acrylic is like so vibrant. So, and I think acrylic pouring must have popped up on YouTube or something because I know I follow like tutorials on youtube and uh-huh. that's how i did and i think pretty like quickly i had a lot of paintings accumulated and um spent a lot of money on art supplies because it's really expensive right so yeah because you use a um, lot of paint to do it right <laughs> yeah it's a lot of paint yeah and um so that's how i started with my whole um artist career i guess mm-hmm. acrylic painting and acrylic pouring yeah Okay. And now you do the acrylic pouring, which first I'm, I'm assuming didn't go well right away. Right. I mean, or did you just right out of the gate, you were perfect at it? <laughs> no, no, no. There was a lot of experimentation and, you know, people can, a lot of people don't think it's art and that's, you know, I, I think it's a great discussion, but mm-hmm. um, there was a definitely a lot of 
experimenting and trying to to get you know what you want and developing a style gradually right which yeah. i think is definitely part of um you know what an artist is and you know just because anyone can do acrylic art anyone can draw too you know anyone can pick up oh, yeah. and draw so i don't think that discredits it as an art form and you know like I think it's great that people are discussing that. Um, that's just, but that's just my take <laughs> of it as an artist who yeah. does do it. <laughs> right. <so. laughs> yeah. I don't think we should all assume that uh, everybody accepts what we do and thinks it's great. I mean, that's why there are different yeah. genres of music there. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all different. There's, there wouldn't be a country music if people all liked pop music, you know, it, it, yeah. it's exactly they're different things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think part of it is that, you know, there are shows and museum that just um just says, you know, if you're acrylic poor, we don't want you. Really? And that is, I think, part of why the con conversation oh. is more than oh, country music versus pop music. You know, like because they're like authorities that says that. I didn't know um, that. That's yeah, that's straight and, out just like saying we don't accept your way of creating. Wow. Right. And, you know, it's because it's everyone can do it. Anyone's doing it. Right. Well, anybody you know, like can do it. YouTube. So um, I'm, yeah, I'm very I'm very lightly upset about this. That's actually really <laughs> insulting. <laughs> well, there are people who are very insulted by it. Okay. And, um, I know, mean, I, really I get the point of view, but I mean, as an art gallery to literally go, we're not going to put up this kind of art. That's just censorship in a way, I suppose. But that's the debate yeah. you're talking about. It's what way yeah. do you take that? OK. Mm -hmm. All right. I like yeah. the I like the the fact that you have an open mind about it too. You're kind of like, I disagree with it, but it's a discussion. Right. But you know, with every art show or art gallery that doesn't take it, right? There's another art show in our gallery that doesn't mind, and I have a record that says that I can sell these very well. So you yeah. know, it's it's a loss if you don't want to sell it. So um, yeah, I think you know, it's just different standards, and you know, if some galleries are more, you know, with it with the times, you know, and mm -hmm. others are more traditional, still take CDs. So it's just different ways of uh, doing business. Yeah. And, and I'd like to point out it's, I wouldn't say everybody could do it. Like I, I seeing your work, I, if, if I did what you did, everything would just be a brown blob. Like it would just, I, I don't think I would be able, like you have color palettes that are fan. You have pictures behind you and there are color palettes that are fanned out that look like they work together. Like you had to do something to make that work. If I did it, it would just all mix together and be nothing. So how do you choose like the palettes or the, or not the palettes, the, the colors that you use when you do the pores or when you do whatever? I mean, I guess I don't know what the method behind you is there either. It's It's got the streaks going across. I want to say yeah, it looks I, like it's underwater. <laughs> yeah, I do love, yeah, so you're talking about, yeah. I do love the whole like blues, water. Yeah, I love painting ocean. It just calms me, calms me down and it's a good starting point, you know. Um, and then with blues, I usually go with like teals or purples and uh, I kind of have like a signature palette like that. Mm -hmm. And with this painting, this is one of my kind of signature like seascape, sunset kind of um style and i use a palette knife to get that okay sort of effect like a uh, sunset on the beach that sort of thing and yeah and you know uh it's not just color overload right like this painting you can't see the whole thing because it's actually bigger but um you can't just be blues purples everywhere it mm -hmm. actually has a lot of way to tone it down so that when it does pop like on the top and the bottom of the painting it really makes an impact so um yeah it's it, you need to be selective, I think, with how much colors you put. You, you can't put a whole rainbow on. <laughs> you could, but right. I choose not to um, because well, I want it would just look like a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want the colors to actually, you know, speak when I want them to, and yeah. Um, yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, no, it totally does. And and the uh, I guess that also gets into you went from acrylic pores to you're saying you're working with a palette knife now. Now, how did you progress or realize like, did you want to try different things or how did you discover that style of doing it too? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it doesn't yeah. seem like a natural progression to me, but it, maybe it is. No, I think it is because with acrylic pores, there's so many like techniques. And I think that's why, again, you know, it's unorthodox because people use like 
kitchen strainers and really combs and yeah uh huh. i don't even there's so many things like the whole kitchen sink any tools that you can find you can pour through them or with them and get different effects okay so um but the with the palette knife that's one of the techniques that i just really really love and, and i think it's you know creates a calming effect that i'm looking for in these sort of paintings these ocean uh, escape so that's why i kind of stuck with that with um yeah with these paintings okay but it is one of the the techniques that that comes with the acrylic pouring yeah another one is the painting right behind you it's so it's so handy that you have some examples right behind <laughs> your head um is when i said that it seems like it's underwater um you have yeah. a technique where it kind of looks like there are even bubbles happening and mm -hmm. I, I've seen that on a few of the things you've done, and I really yeah. enjoy that. So it, you started implementing that into there too. Now, so you've got the palette knife going across, and then how are you making? Are are you just painting the extra things on top of it? Like it's the, um, the bubbles. They are achieved with water and oil, basically. So it's something oh. that I add in the paint. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. It's, I love this. It's so, basically, no, you. Definitely, yeah. Every every single bubble because that would take like. <laughs> yeah no that and that's what i was wondering so yeah. water and oil now now is that another thing that just kind of you discovered over time with the uh mm -hmm. like the uh mediums that you're using and you're like oh if you put oil in it it does this that's a very uh common thing to add okay. in uh, acrylic pouring because you know you're trying to achieve those bubbles mainly yeah. so but that's the other thing right um i don't want bubbles overload no on a painting i mean that could look good too but sometimes i want more structured and um, more defined you know placement of where the bubbles are and in this painting you can't see the whole thing sorry i was trying to paint like a waterfall so um yeah i think the balance is very important in a painting you know the composition uh balance of what percentage i will try to go with like a six seventy thirty percentage of the main focus versus the rest of the background mm -hmm. or the main pop of color versus less, you know, more muted color. So um, try to keep the balance in mind. Okay. How did you go from now discovering, the, looking up acrylic pores, doing acrylic stuff, working with the knives, and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden it was like, now I'm going to present in markets. Like it's one thing to just paint at home, but when did you finally realize like, I'm going to go out in the world and start selling these? Like when did that happen? Well, it's actually, um, so I had way too much stuff going on, right? And mm -hmm. <laughs> like way too many paintings at home. And I had to sell things so that I can pay for the supplies. So it was either throw them <laughs> out or do something with it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I had to pay, like, if I want to keep painting, I need to get, you know, sell some things to, to pay for the art supplies so I can keep painting. And that's how I started. And in fact, when I first started, first started doing markets, I didn't bring a single painting with me. I had other smaller stuff. Like um, I would cut up a painting that I don't like and make jewelry out of it. Oh, wow. You know, okay. Because I thought, you know, nobody's going to buy a painting from me on the spot, but a smaller piece of jewelry or, you know, magnets or um, keychains, sure, why not, right? They're like ten dollars, under ten dollars, so that makes sense. And I didn't bring paintings with me to markets until I would say this year, like June, July of this year, because I just didn't think people would buy it. I was mainly selling my paintings online because I thought people would have more time to think about it, and the pictures look better potentially, and you know, so yeah. But when I <laughs> brought paintings to my uh, markets i i actually started with the flowers that's right in front of me i was amazed by how people could go from they don't know who i am right they they were just out for a jog because i um i said the markets on like state street mm -hmm. here in madison um and 30 seconds later they can go i want that one and pay for it and go home with a painting that they they didn't think they they were right they, they were out you know buying a tomato maybe but they and they went home with a painting. like that is absolutely wild to me mm -hmm. because i'm used to you know people coming to my social media one way or another maybe through ads and i post daily they get to know me i post about my new work they go on the website look at how much it is how big it is think about it right because that's what i thought makes sense mm -hmm. but I didn't realize that people can just 
decide that they fall in love with a painting. Yeah. And buy it right on the spot. So, you know, I still don't bring obviously large pieces because that wouldn't make sense and it's a lot of work. But yeah, um, it took a long time to get like comfortable with the idea that people do love your art and they sometimes don't need, you know, to get to know you for like six months before they make a purchase. Yeah. I, 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 uh, kind of agree with what you're saying or I feel I feel what you're saying like I just assume everybody uh when I start out with absolutely hates what I do so <laughs> and I'm not saying that's what you did but I mean that's I get that like it's it's easier to go well if I don't show them then they can't hate it uh sort of thing you know it's it, so I absolutely get that but I want to say making it into jewelry and stuff like that which by the way brilliant um, it seems like way more work. <laughs> to, to... <laughs> it is. And, you know, I don't think I was charging enough. I don't do that anymore because it was a lot of work. And I yeah. Charge and, you know, jewelry is a, it's a whole category. You know, you can get so much for, like, the materials and all of that. Like, I just, yeah, that's why I don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. And th that's what I was going to say. Like, for the artwork, you're paying what it's for. And then with the jewelry, you're paying what the market value of jewelry is. Yeah. And the time you're going in to go, okay, this painting I spent this much time on and now figuring out how to put it in with the um, fasteners. I don't know the names of jewelry parts. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, with I the thingamajabbies. <laughs> <laughs> but, but other, I mean, on top of that though, that's still, that's fascinating that you did that. I love it. I know that you do still have, um, some things that you've just turned into art. You're not, I don't think you're necessarily going, here's some artwork that I took and now I'm turning it into something like on your store that you've recently, oh, which still, I got to talk about you connecting the store to Instagram. Um, but the, uh, like you have magnets and mm -hmm. ornaments that you were selling and they're very representative right. of your work, but mm -hmm. they look like yeah. they're actually made from or specifically for those not like taking old paintings and so how are you making these yeah. other things yeah so the uh the ornaments um they are either on plastic or on wood so they're just directly painted okay on, yeah each ornament so yeah you're right they are painted for that and you know i think i have a uh you may have seen the christmas tree design yes. ornament so you know i try to paint it to look kind of like tree branches coming from the middle so yeah you're right that that is just painted and each one is a tiny piece of artwork, I think. And the magnets, um, they are, I don't paint them individually, but they're also painted for the magnets. I just glue like the gloss on top. Yeah. And, and yeah. are you just using like, uh, what's that called? That Mod Podge or are you using resin? Like, how are you doing those? Um, to glue the gloss on top, I use like a jewelry glue, but okay. it's pretty low tech. <laughs> I, I, I ask glue. because I always have so much, um, I, I guess not overfill. What is it called? Wait, uh, not waste. I have extra parts for a lot of things and I'm like, Oh, I could make something from this. And it's like, but do I spend the time doing it? And then I'm seeing you do it. And it's like, gosh, I, you're, you're doing some of the things where I'm like, that's kind of the idea that I had. Like, especially you did some coasters. I got a lot yeah. of stuff that I could make coasters out of. And I tried it once uh -huh. and I'm like, this looks like a child made it. Yours of course looked very professional. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so it's the, what looking at that, I'm like going, maybe if I just applied myself more, I can do these things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a whole podcast and whatever else you have. Here. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you're just, not lazy. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I just feel bad having all this excess stuff and then I don't want to throw it away because it seems wasteful. And I'm like, it could be reused and I know it can be reused. It's just like, but then I got to spend the time figuring out how. So, and then do I keep yeah. doing it? Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm having like an inner monologue with myself here about this whole thing. Okay. So now getting to the store. Now I have connected a Facebook store to, not to Instagram because the account that I did it for, I didn't have enough followers, which is one of the requirements. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, but the, uh, the connecting the store, even through a Facebook shop or anything like that, not the easiest thing. And even when you think you got it, it's like, okay that didn't work. And it's like, why didn't mm -hmm. work? And it's like, I don't know. We don't have a support team. You figure it out. You know? So <laughs> how, first of all, how long did it take you to get it right? <laughs> well, I first tried to do it. So I have an online store mm -hmm. and um, I use WordPress and WooCommerce. So I know that probably doesn't mean a lot for most of your listeners, but um, they're just hosting websites, kind of like Facebook hosts, you know, all the things that you post. And so I've had that for since 2018, probably. And mm -hmm. that's where I sell online through. And I know that people connect their online store with Facebook. 
And I tried to do that like a year and a half ago, I think, and I just couldn't get it to work. And it's around the same I'm time I started. <laughs> yeah, I like I definitely, you know, like the WordPress is not the easiest, you know, hosting what to website website hosting tool to use and mm-hmm. you know with all the different templates and all that. So I'm not like not um yeah, I'm not a web designer, but you know, I can usually get by with the knowledge that I have, but I just could not get it to work and I gave up. Yeah. A year and a half ago. And yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, I was like, it's, it was the first day, right? Of Yeah, it was January 1st. <laughs> the day everybody goes, um, I'm going to try that thing again. <laughs> well, actually, that wasn't the thing. I think I w- wanted to try it again because I wanted to, um, I had a whole week of break. Okay. I didn't do anything art-related. I didn't do any work either. Like, I had a whole week. Oh, well, um, like full-on break. Yeah, so okay. I was, like, feeling just renewed and rejuvenated. And it was. I was like, okay, I'm just going to try to do this one more time. And maybe because, you know, all the integrations and stuff, sometimes tools change. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe at the time that I was trying to do a year, uh, a year and a half ago, it was just a bug or something. But anyway, I figured it out. It was... Um, I won't bore you with the details, uh, but it, so now, yeah, the store, my online store is connected with Facebook and is also connected with this Instagram. Is, well, this is what I find funny too, is one of the, uh, so they have a couple of things on the back end of Facebook that when you want to connect your store, they're like, do you use this store? Super yep. easy. Just click here. And one of the things is WooCommerce. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that it and is. then like, I think the other one is BigCommerce uh, is the other cart that it integrates yeah. with. And right. you're just supposed to click it and it goes, okay, answer a few questions and then boop, there you go. Like the, the store I connected it to was not that. And it was like, you can connect it with the Facebook pixel and that's far more hoops to jump through uh, than no, the that's what I did too. It oh, downloaded did. the pixel for me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and that's, yeah. that's the so, thing. It does it for you. Me, I had to go through and then find the place to put it in my cart and do it manually with WooCommerce. Yeah. Say, okay. I still had to do like the uploading to my like website and putting oh, in yeah. like three different API codes and all of that, but it worked. So that's, that's good. I don't even want to revisit it. If I have to do it again, I'm just like, <laughs> don't it touch again. it. It's working. <laughs> no, I'm not touching it. <laughs> no, I get that. And that's, that's the other thing too, is uh, over time, I kept trying to find a way like when do I really need when I when I sell this stuff, do I really have to go to like four different sites that I'm selling on? And it's like, yeah, if I want to sell on four different sites, that's what I got to do. And then manage the inventory that way. How how much yeah. how many things would you say you create? Because I feel like you have a lot. So <laughs> how much do you actually produce? Well, obviously paintings, the, mm-hmm. those are a big part. They're not my number one seller because, you know, they're obviously bigger tickets. And yeah. um, I that's why I create magnets, right? Those are think, you know, $6 a piece and easier to digest for people. So I create a lot of magnets and they're just fun to do because you can't really screw it up. Or <laughs> it's so small, you know, if, if it's not good, you'll know, get another one. Yeah. Um, so I make magnets, I'm trying to see... Uh, prints, so reproductions of my work that I really, really like, mm-hmm. and I want to to get you know have more people have access to those. So I sell a good amount of prints. Holiday season is where I have ornaments. I don't have those year round because okay. that would make sense. I also have uh, coasters uh, that you were talking about in the holiday season because what I do is I pick my favorite paintings I've done in that year. And I print them on coasters. Okay. So oh, it's okay. Kind of a, a collection of you know the best of 2021. You know, and I usually do 12, so one per month. You know, one painting that I select per month. Not exactly. So yeah, I do. I I have a kind of a broad uh, product range, which not isn't a good thing necessarily, because you know sometimes you know you want that brand awareness, you want that niche, you want people to know that's your stuff. So. Um, having too many stuff going on at the same time isn't always a good idea, but that's mm-hmm. kind of what I've narrowed down to. <laughs> okay. Now. Yeah. And how do you take, uh, for the prints and everything, how, how are you getting the images for, are you using like a camera or do you have a large scanner? Like how are you getting the images? Yeah. I either take a, a scan with my scanner. If it's a small enough painting to go in a scanner bed okay. or I uh, pay a professional photographer. Oh, okay. To take yeah, because I can't, I just, you know, it's so much easier for me to just pay someone professional to do it than doing it myself and spending hours cursing and, you know, letting things on fire. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not good at the photography. <laughs> okay. Do you know somebody that has a camera? Because I wanted to point out too, with your, even though you said you just started out your YouTube channel, I'm sorry, but your your camera work is fantastic on it. So, like, do you know somebody that helps you, <laughs> or do, are you doing it? Yeah. So I think you're talking about the one very specific video that I had. I think no. I think all of them are, but I know what one you're mentioning. But I, personally, them. I think they're great. <laughs> no, most of the, the videos I just shot with my with my film. But oh, of course, the one, <laughs> the one intro video that I have, um, where like my face. And, you know, is in the video and talking. Yeah. That's one that I hired. Yeah. So it was, she's one of my previous neighbors. We moved, but she, you know, so that's how I knew her. Okay. And she did that video, which is absolutely amazing, I think. Yeah. And um, she also takes a lot of my product photos. Okay. Yeah. And it was easy because I could just, you know, take paintings over to her. You know, neighbors. <laughs> like I didn't have to drive anywhere, but now I'm like, a little bit farther away. <laughs> They're like, oh no, here they come again. <laughs> Get yeah. paintings in their arm. Anyway, um, and uh, I saw recently too, you were, um, you're going to start doing gallery openings or you have a gallery? Like what's this? Mm -hmm. What's So is the gallery in your home? Do you have a, a space? Yeah. Okay. This is the gallery. So this is a dedicated space in my house that I have, you know, um, displaying my work. So you can see yeah. um, part of it. And, you know, beyond that, it's just, the kitchen and dining room so <laughs> right um, but it's a space that i have um it's part of why we picked this house um it's just perfect for a gallery and yeah. yeah i have had a couple open galleries i had one in june last year it was my first ever open gallery and i think it was oh. either my four-year anniversary you know being in business th three years i don't remember how many years but um yeah and that was such a huge success i could not believe it because i had never done anything like that before right i've never done a solo exhibit well i've never done like a gallery you know that sort of thing i've done yeah. exhibits here but um and you know it was so scary because i had marketed for it right putting put right. on ads and I, you know those the it adds up and you don't know how many people are going to show up on the actual day and a lot of my friends came, which was so nice of them, you know, very supportive. My neighbors came because we kind of moved in, like, also earlier that year. So people were kind of curious. Oh, yeah. she's an artist. What did she do? And, but, you know, so many people came and I had such a successful day, like, numbers-wise. And I was, I couldn't believe myself. And I kept telling, I hated that I didn't have that many photos because we, my, I was so busy. My husband was busy, you know, was checking out and stuff. And we didn't have that many good photos, but I just, I kept telling myself after, uh, cause it was Saturday and Sunday, but Saturday I was like, you know, I'm going to, never going to forget this day. <laughs> like yeah. It was, um, and the meant, you know, it's not like jam packed. Right. Um, but still I was expecting 10 people <laughs> yeah. to come. And I think over 60 people came and almost everyone bought something, which was, you know, a bonus. And it, it was just, yeah, it was unbelievable. And I think I we took a huge risk in buying this house that, you know, has a huge studio upstairs mm -hmm. and uh, the gallery space. I didn't know because, you know, last year it was a pandemic. I didn't have a single show going on, right? Mm -hmm. No show. And all of the sales that I had were online, which was so difficult because right you're building that trust on social media they, they don't know you and it takes like three months for someone to buy something and it was so difficult and i i think we took a huge risk in you know investing in myself as an artist with a big uh, studio upstairs this gallery space that's absolutely beautiful and that was the day that i thought okay Maybe you can do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not like such a stupid mistake to buy <laughs> a house with like all these extra rooms that you're using for art. Like, you know, it's just, and it was, yeah, it was quite something. <laughs> Nice. Think back on. Yeah. How did you, yeah. uh, or what kind of things did you try differently or do differently or learn from b the shutdown or like things that you're like, I'm going to try this and see what works and what doesn't work. What are some of the things you did? Yeah. Um, I think one thing was I had to post on social media consistently, okay. which was something that I kind of dreaded. You know, I'm not, um, like, natural <laughs> with social media like I, I struggle because my life is kind of boring you know I go to work either at home or <laughs> and then I, I paint in my studio like 
I don't have, you know, I have two cats that barely do anything. Like, there's nothing exciting <laughs> about me that goes on. And I just struggle to, like, figure out what the heck do I post to keep mm-hmm. people kind of engaged. And I can't always be posting, like, a finished piece because then it just sounds like sales, sales, sales all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Like, no, nobody wants that either. So figuring out what to, to post to you know, connect with people still virtually, right, uh, remotely was a big challenge. And um, I'm glad that I kept to that because I don't think the return was immediate, right? It wasn't, I didn't have a great 2020, but 2021 was when things started opening up a little bit. I think that's what, you know, with the open gallery, with my, uh, with the shows in person, I think that's where it, like, um, showed the return, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, no, it does. At least that's how I am interpreting it, because the people didn't just randomly show up to my gallery. They right. knew who I was um, before they came, and that's through you know the building the relationship. Online. Yeah. Hey, you won an award and I didn't, so you're doing something right. <laughs> so I wouldn't say I you're that boring. That <laughs> I have no idea how that happens because you know. I, I don't have lots of family or friends here. You know, I'm like, what do you call it? Like planted in, you know, like I didn't grow up here. I, and okay. most of my families aren't even in the same country. So um, all of the votes, I earned them. I, I didn't, you know, yeah. uh, all of my- Of course you earned votes. them. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, yeah, that's, that's something that I would just continue to talk about it until 2022 when I win again. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Now, now you're confident. <laughs> no, that's great. And you do have some, you do have some uh, events coming up in 2022 as well. I see that you're already posting for the markets that you're going to. What is the market that you, you said that you normally go to on state street that you, you table at? Right. So if you are in Madison, then you would know the farmer's market that's yeah. happening every um, Saturday. That's I think from April to November. So not in the dead of winter, but right. Um, so that's on the square, but on State Street, so right uh, adjacent to the square, there are a few like uh, spots that vendors, um, any sort of artist makers can set up. And obviously you need a permit to yeah. work with a city to do that. But um, so that's where I will be on all the Saturdays that I don't have um, an- another event. Okay. Uh, so that. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm hoping to do other shows like uh, Madison Makers Market. They host a couple events every year. Yes. Hopefully I can get into the um, our fair on the square or our fair off the square this year. We will see. Those are very competitive shows. Oh, yeah. And hopefully they will take me in our <laughs> acrylic pour. We will see. <laughs> but um yeah, lots of lots of art fairs and you know events happening in Madison uh, once the snow is melted. So I'm very excited. For right, that. the snow that just came that we're already sick of. <laughs> yeah. Although you've no. got like probably a beautiful yard and everything, and it probably looks fantastic where you are. <laughs> Me, I'm uh, just. I can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, is there anything else that you'd like to mention or things that you're working on or other projects that you have coming up that you'd like to tell people about before yeah, we go today? I okay. Do. So um, since you asked, so I will actually have an upcoming exhibit at the Trout Museum of Art at oh. Appleton, okay. Wisconsin. So yeah, I think it's just two hours up from here. If um, that's going to be... Uh, May, June, sometime around there. You might want to figure out when that is. (laughs) You do have to send your stuff there. (laughs) Yo, so I'm very excited and it's going to be different. It's going to be very different than what you see in the background. I have been, you know, trying to develop other styles and some of my new work on the website are very different than this. You know, it's more muted, it's more neutral, more organic, um, Hmm. you know, less crazy colors. Still, I, I mean, you know, I love these as well, and I love my new um, styles as well. So uh, it's going to be I, – I don't think I have figured out the title yet for the solo exhibit. You know, I, I want to um, still think about that, but it will be about, um, you know, my culture, like as an immigrant and having, you know, both Asian and American culture and using different mediums and – all that. So okay. <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, it's not going to be a big show, but 
because it's just going to be in their atrium at the museum, but still it, it means a huge deal to me and I want to make it a meaningful experience for people. So yeah, yeah. working very hard on that. Oh yeah. No. And I mean, I don't have anything in a museum, so, you know, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. That's great. And, and how did you, how did you uh, get hooked up with that? I don't know. They contacted me. <laughs> I'm like, great. Yes. I would love emails like these. Like, do you want to be in a museum? Absolutely. But um, the whole, so the, the series is called Art is Her. Mm -hmm. And it's about highlighting female artists and, you know, um, highlighting the, the wage discrepancy in, in the different, you know, female versus male artists. So it's a very important topic. And yeah. so every two months they... Uh, and they started this in 2021 and they will continue this through the end of 2022, I believe. But every two months they highlight a different uh, female artist. I'm not sure if they're only in Wisconsin. I I, um, I have to double check, but it's a uh, very yeah, great opportunity. I'm so honored yeah. to, be, to be selected and uh, yeah, um, looking forward to that. No, that's fantastic. That's really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for you. I think that's great. <laughs> I'm really glad that I got a chance to talk to you. And I'm glad that you posted that ad that made me remember that I wanted to talk to you. Thank you.